by the one and only. I already gave you a legendary intro. Sean McCoy, I don't know if I have the uh, the honor of calling you Shady yet, but I appreciate you coming on. No, nah, you call me Shady, man. It's all good. Thanks all for right. having me, by the way. You said what? Said, Thanks for having me. Oh, man, anytime. I, uh, for one, I wanted to start off by saying it's so hard to be good at one thing. Like, I'm trying to be the best broadcaster to ever do it, right? You, obviously, there's people trying to be the best lawyer, the best doctor. You made it to the NFL, and not only were you just like a regular NFL player, like, you weren't just a regular NFL player. You were exceptional at the best league there is. And now you're transitioning into the media game and you're excelling in that. So first of all, I just wanted to give you your flowers because it's so hard to just be good at one thing. Yeah, well, well, thank you. I just, you know what, man, it's always just like stepping outside your, your comfort zone and, and, and trying new things. I always love uh, the media and I always strive to be good at everything I do, even playing ball. Like I remember as a kid, man, I, I have a bad practice, right? Or as kids that might have been better than me, I would try so hard to be better than them are practicing in games and et cetera. And it kind of carried over to college, to, to the pros, and, and now I'm doing the same thing in media. Yeah, you really are. And just from the short time I've been there, so I've known Darnell for a while. He's been on the show a lot. I've had Joy on. But actually, like, immersing myself in there, I'm from Florida. And so, like, there's just so many different things that have been happening for me. So being there and just being a fly on the wall and just the way – I've seen the way you guys do your production meetings, the way you interact with each other. You're, you're on a, I Am Athlete. It's just been unbelievable. Can you just take me through that? Has it been everything you thought it would be? Is there anything that kind of took you by surprise, getting immersing yourself at the top tier level of media? Yeah, you know what? Like, I, I was actually surprised on how much people, like, focus in on players, like, that's involved in the media. So, like, doing the podcast world, right? People love that. I Am Athlete, they always talk about it. And then now I'm going to speak with Fox. So it's like I'm touching um, like two different dimensions, right? One is like, uh, I want to say more of the um, the cultural style, you know, with the I Am Athlete. And then more corporate side with Fox. Um, so it's like I'm touching so many different people, man, with, with one rock, you know? And I love it. I actually do love it. Like, I do. Yeah, and what's really cool about what you do is you're yourself. I mean, you're not trying to be anything other than that. Like, you're just being who you are, and success comes from you being just who you are. And it really shows, even on Fox, I Am Athlete, we know, like, tuning in from just a consumer or, or just a fan standpoint, like, I know what I'm getting with Shady. Like, you're just going to give me the raw, it is what it is. And that's kind of why I think people gravitate so much towards you. Um, and I was going to ask you that, what is that like now being on the other side of things? So you're used to being in the locker room, you're used to putting on that jersey and that tuning on the show, but now... You're the guy that's actually breaking it down and giving the analysis of everything. How has that been like for you? It's been pretty cool. It, it is weird because, like, for example, some things I, I might have said critiquing different games or players um, and teammates, right? I won't get into names, but certain teammates, man, they called me or text me, hey, bro, I seen you say this about such and such. Like, what's up? And I'm like, whoa, we still boys. <laughs> you still my guy, but I'm doing my job. And, and it's, it's no different from – the reporter, that you, the reporter that you don't know, right? Joe Blow that, that writes for the Eagles or writes for the Chargers. If Herbert has three picks, he got to write about it. I'm the same. So that's been like the, the most um, tricky thing, I think, like just with, with real friends um, and trying to be like mindful of that and not getting too critical of them or their teammates because they're friends with them. And um, But other than that, it, it's been excellent. I, I, I think more players should do it. Right. Because I think that the media world needs a little bit of both. They talk about like new media, and old media. I think it should be a mixture of both. It's guys that actually play. Right. Because guys that play, I'm not saying they know it all because they really don't. And people that haven't played, I'm not saying they know it all, but, but some of them don't. And it's like a mixture. It's all if you study the game, if you put pads on or you didn't put pads on and you know the game, that's all that matters. You see what I'm saying? But I think a mixture of the football players that experienced it. In the locker room, you know what I mean? Can speak about the coaches, um, um, how they're with their team. Does it make a big difference? Where, where me, the media can't really understand that. But with the media side, but hey, I'm watching tons of tape. I, I, I've seen, because um, um, history repeats itself. I've seen this type of football didn't work out. Now they're doing it again. It might not work out. So all them things combined, I think, makes great media. Right. I agree. Now, I don't want to get too deep here, but. I had a lot of like family stuff going on. So my best friend, he played football for Bethune Cookman. His family really just took me in right. and it made me kind of really value relationships and how you carry yourself and being good to people. And when I started covering the Orlando magic and interviewing LeBron and Giannis and Kawhi and Steph, I noticed, I'm like, wait a second, 
not everyone is that genuine. Now, not to mention those guys were, though, by the way. But I feel like fame and success doesn't change you. It just makes you more of who you are. And so kind of going back to your roots, take me through, like, who you are and how you carry yourself on camera is how you are off camera. I can speak to that because I've been around you. Have you always carried yourself that way? Yeah, I've always been real confident, right, before I score touchdowns. That's just <laughs> – my, um, my mom and dad have been married for like 38 years or something like that. So um, they're both different, right? But my mom is like super confident, right? So I kind of picked up that from her. And my dad is like, he's real laid back, but he's like real honorable, right? He, he's like all about principles. I picked that up from him. So I think just a mixture of, of growing up like that. And I learned a lot from them. So I'm always myself, even when like, like, I guess everybody has probably smoked weed before. It's probably just, you know, this happens. I've never smoked because I always was like taught that it's wrong and I never want to be like a follower. So in my mind, I just think, well, I don't want to smoke because I just don't want to. I don't, it doesn't do anything for me. So like if all my boys are smoking, like I think in my mind, y'all crazy. Instead of it being like, if it's eight guys doing something and I'm the ninth guy that's not doing it, it's like, you're, you're the, you're weird. So I think this, that helped me out growing up is like, you know, being raised to be like confident all the time, no matter what it looks like to everybody else. And that's why I'm always like myself. Like I come in the room and I'm gonna speak to everybody, you know, how you doing? I'm, I'm who I am, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I, like it. I like that about myself. That's dope. And that's really crazy you say that because me and my boy, we pride ourselves on that too. I've never smoked. And man, out of all the parties and I've used to play basketball, everyone's, hey, you're just, you know, but we always pride ourselves like, man, why don't y'all drink? Why don't y'all smoke? I'm like, I just don't need it. And I mean, I grew up with some crazy stuff too, but so it kind of turned me off of that. Not that I judge anyone that does do it, but I've kind of just been laser focused and like, man, I just want to reach this point. And that's what my only focus is. And I just don't really care what people have to say about it. Um, but let's read the box a little bit. This one always fascinates me. You made it to the highest level and exceeded at the highest level. When did you know, when did LaShawn McCoy like, man, I'm actually really good at this. Like, when did you know, was it a practice? Was it a game? Was it a certain year? You're like, bro, I, I think I can go to the, to the league with this. I, I think it was more college. In high school, believe it or not, um, I was like, I was an All-American. I was really good, right? And mm -hmm. had a lot of success, but I just thought I was better than all the like, high school kids, you know? I didn't think I was like the NFL. And that's everybody's dream. Everybody talks about it. I think in college, though, when I got there as a, as a, as a freshman and I was doing the same thing, I'm like, whoa, maybe, maybe I can go to the NFL. Maybe I can. And I remember telling myself, like, damn, if I could just play football, I can do this until I'm like 45 years old, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe like my freshman year of college. I Man, so cool. And what was that like when you finally got to reach that pinnacle? Like, take me through that feeling. What is that like to be drafted? You um, obviously you played for Pittsburgh, got drafted by the Eagles. Man, you've had so much success. But what is that feeling like when you're like, man, I did it? Yeah, it's, it's major, man. Like, just, I don't know, because as a kid, I always dreamed of playing in the NFL. I remember watching uh, Barry Sanders. He's my favorite. I tried to model my game after him. I mean, it's like a big gap, but I tried. <laughs> um, and I remember he cried. I cried. I cried when he retired. And my mom was like, "What are you crying, boy? Get in bed. You got school tomorrow." You know. But that's a small examples of like I, I love to play the game. I, I loved it. Um, and like, it, it was big to me. You know. And like some kids, I, I tell people now when they ask me questions about the NFL, I say, "Yo, if you don't love the game," Don't play, right? Mm -hmm. I, I loved it. I, I loved like going to practice. If I have a bad day, I can't wait to get there the next the next day. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like I, a session for it, like you know. And um, I'm a big Kobe Bryant guy, and he always talks about like um, how playing ball or basketball and like dominating, uh, being one of the best, like like it drove him crazy. And I'm the same way, like I. I remember just competing and competing and competing. And when I, when I didn't have that competitive edge in me anymore, that's when I knew it was time to retire, right? Yeah. Um, so that's just the, the name of the game, man, for myself. It's more like competing and, and loving the game because I grew up a, a crazy football fan. Right. Now, I'm obsessed with broadcast, and I listen to every podcast you could think of. I take notes from absolutely everybody. I've taken notes. You know how I kind of, when you guys are on air, I'm actually assigned to the herd. So I get there at like 540 in the morning take the bus there in the morning. I have to wake up at like four. So I take a bus um, there because I'm not from here. I didn't bring my car. So I got, it's about like an hour to get there. So I get there early, cut up tape. I stay for the herd. Um, and then I ended up, I work on the herd. And then I stay after to kind of just pick your guys' brains, even though I'm not as, um, 
um, assigned to your show. And so oh. after the production meeting, I see you guys kind of on air and I'm just like a fly on the wall. And I love how genuine you are. I love how precise and articulate joy is. I love Emmanuel Acho's like opening rants. And so I take notes from absolutely everybody. Um, and it's been unbelievable for me. For you, was there a specific locker room? Was there a specific team where you kind of felt that same way? Like, man, this, this, I click with this team, with these guys. There's people that I'm learning from. Was there a certain moment for you? Yeah. So I guess my story is a little different just because I've been on like three, four teams um, and there's so many different personalities. Like my first one with Philadelphia, that was so cool. I was talking about everybody was the same age. I was with Deshaun Jackson, Jeremy Macklin, Brent Selleck. And then we had an older superstar who everybody was a big fan of, Michael Vick. Yeah, yeah. That We all got along. Offense, defense, we all hung out. Uh, that probably was the, the, the best for me. Um, but then it was weird because when I went to um, the Bucks, Tampa, like everybody was older. And it was more like respect than like I was with Gronk, where me and Gronk have done commercials. We've done Pro Bowls together. Yeah. I was there with Mike Evans, right, older guy. Success, successful career, um, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown. So, like, and then Brady. I've always been friends with Brady and, and loved his game. So it's like we all was like a mutual respect because so much we did in the league together. Right. The teams like, damn, I'm watching what he's doing on his team. I'm like, oh, man, he's balling. He's watching me. I'm balling. So that would probably was like a different experience, and I, I really cherished that moment. Um, you know, so I just, if I had to pick two, I would say just my younger days, of coming in there as a, as a 20 year old, yep. dealing with my teammates, and then coming in as an older vet towards the end of my career and vibing with older um, veterans was, was pretty unique and cool. Yeah, I remember listening to you when Colin asked you that question. You talked about, I think it was, you said Evans brought in a bunch of gifts and stuff and the camaraderie yeah. that you had. He's our best, coolest teammate. And you know what's funny, real quick, about Colin's show? I don't know if you noticed, but can you tell my swag changes up a little bit? Did you see that? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was telling somebody today, I, I know it's off topic, but then I go ahead. I'm really diving into the like the, the media game and on different settings, I may approach it differently, right? Speak differently, talk differently, um, explain more of the game compared to different shows or podcasts. And I was thinking like, um, because I'm new with this, I'm always trying to learn. The same way you're taking bits and pieces from different um, platforms, I do the same. But I was like critiquing myself. I'm like, damn, I'm pretty good at um like a uh, salamander, and that, they, they, they like change the adapt, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like that though, as far as like adapt to my, my um my surroundings. Yeah, you you had the pillow on your lap. I remember I was in the control room and I was listening to them talk and breaking it down. And man, you had your like you had your thinking cap on, man, and it felt like you were taking us back into the locker room, the way you dissected the game and you broke the game down. I'm like, man, this is a different side of Shady I haven't seen before because on speak. I love who you are on speak, but to your point, you were just able to adapt and shift to how you broke the game down on the herd. I was like, I like what he's doing there. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's a, a lot younger on the speak. You know, guys or my group is more my age, my style, my slang, my swagger. And Colin's a little older and he's more reserved. So, I'm like, okay, let me set back. Like, let me give you more stories and details on a more calmer version. Um, break down the tape compared to speak was like, it's more live more energy yeah now let me ask you this so you did play with brady um you played on the chiefs when i covered the the magic and lakers so i'm from daytona beach but i drive to the orlando game so when i covered um they when they, the lakers came to town my like, bro lebron is bigger than life i was like it, it just you thought it was a lakers game even though we're in orlando right now tom brady tom brady is that same feel i do a lot of analogies uh, Tom Brady and Braun feel like they're one to one. They're just bigger than life. Their brands, the longevity, how great they've been, the GOAT conversation. Patrick Mahomes feels a little like Steph Curry to me. He just makes it look so effortless, so easy, flamboyant. What is it like being teammates with both of those guys? Is there one that you kind of grab? Not that one is better than the other or one that you like more than the other, but is there one that you kind of your game clicked more with that type of player? I click well with both of them. I think um, it's just unique to see because, like, one – is an older goat more successful? Um, different styles of ball playing. Other ones, a young goat is doing a lot, yeah, doing a lot early. And um, I think eventually he'll he'll be on that same platform, that same level as Tom Brady. But it was a, a nice experience to play with them. I mean, just to see how they're so different, but then yet again so similar. 
both very competitive, both winners, um, both very talented. I think the difference is maybe this experience part. Tommy's more experienced. Um, can pick a defense apart mentally. Uh, prepares way different compared to Mahomes. He prepares, but he's a lot more younger and he's more athletic. Um, I think at this point of time, he's more talented. And he's a different game. I think it's the same as like how Jordan was dunking on cats, doing the fadeaway turnarounds, and now Steph Curry is shooting from 40 yards or 40 feet out, 30 feet out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they're both getting things done together, but it's different styles, you know, and uh, that was cool to see. I got two more things for you. I know you're a busy man. I know you're about to prep for speak, so make sure you tune in and check that out. Uh, okay. So if I've listened to you, I've watched your guys' show. I know you're big on the Eagles, which I've been 100% correct with, by the way. They're the only undefeated team in the league, so i got to give you your props there. And I know you've been a rush guy. So if I had to ask you right now, there's one team, one player. If there's anything that you see that you would continue to invest stock in, like I'm telling you right now, if you believe in this team now, you won't, you won't regret it later on. Is there a team? Player. You said what? Are you saying team or are you saying player? It could be either or. I would lean towards a team. Is there a team that sticks out to you? It could be a player like, hey, guys, you're not paying attention, but this guy right here. Remember. Um, I would say I would say the birds. Like, I guess it's, it's too late because, I mean, they're already 4-0. But I, I said it earlier in the year, man, they, they put that team together. Oh, this team is the real deal. Like, you, all the um, deficiencies that we have on defense, they're getting it done. You talk about on defense line. They're stacked, secondary, stacked, right? Offensive line, stacked, pass rusher, stacked. Like, so everything you want to talk about, quarterbacks, wide receivers, I mean, like, we really have it. And uh, I said that earlier this year, man, they're going to be pretty good. Howie Roseman did a hell of a job putting that team together. Would you like their odds to, I mean, uh, still early. So much happens in this league, but you're they're right up there with Bills, Chiefs for Super Bowl, right? Yeah. Hell yeah, yes. Okay, just make it sure, just make it sure. Yes, yes. yes. Last question for you, my guy. So, DeAndre Swift, I told everybody this, you know, I was, oh, you're, you're tripping. I said, listen, this kid can play. I was at the, the um, Rams and uh, Bills game, and I ran into uh, Jalen Ramsey's agent. We were in his suite watching the game. And I tell him that, um, I said that, uh, I didn't know that was his agent. And we was talking. And I was like, yeah, he's talking that's about running backs. And I was like, oh man, this kid on um, DeAndre Swift. People don't people really don't know him like that. He's a real deal. He has the best running back skill set in the game. Mm. And he said, you know what? That's my player. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. So I didn't know that was his agent. Um, but I mean if he can stay healthy, he could be really, really good. So we'll see. Mm, I like that. I'm gonna keep my eyes off of that. Lastly, you went ahead and said crazy work. I want a bunch of my uh, guys know that uh, <laughs> you were coming on the podcast. They're like, please bring this up. Can you have them say it one time? How did that come about? You know it was going to explode the way it did when you said crazy work. No, nah, this is me being myself, talking trash. I told you I can adapt. And the guy that I was working with was, was kind of talking fly, talking trash. <laughs> he didn't know that I could adapt. And I let him have it, you know. So that's how the whole crazy work happened. But it is what it is. Oh, and by the way. Right, so all the listeners and the viewers out there, we are having a special edition of Speak called Crazy Work. And everybody out there is giving crazy work out in the league. We're going to put them out there and give them love and, and respect and make flowers. Send them a nice little video with um with, um with some hoodies, you know, like an award. Um, and that's coming out soon. Crazy work. <laughs> Look at you, man. Changing the game. Before I let you go again, thank you for your time. I know I'll, I'll see you. I'm usually there Monday, Tuesday, Friday, so I know I'll see you tomorrow. But all that being said, where can people listen to you, find you? I mean, everyone knows who you are, but any projects you have coming up, the floor is yours. I got, uh, I mean, you can catch me on Twitter at uh, Cuts on Dime, Cuts on Dime. Um, Instagram, Shady McCoy, Shady McCoy. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm on Speak. I'm on I Am Athlete. Um, you know, I do a lot of real estate work and I do a lot of affordable uh, housing, you know, giving back to my communities. And, yeah, I got a lot of things going on. Show me some love. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Hey, I'm going to have to hit your line on the uh, real estate because if an opportunity oh, my line. here, 
I'm going to be moving out here permanently. Right now I'm in an Airbnb, so that's going to end up happening. I'm going to have to reach out to you because California is crazy, crazy expensive. Holla at your boy. I got you. I got you. Well, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate your time. Uh, congratulations on all your success and uh, just can't wait to continue to learn from you. So thank you.